Hello everyone, my name is Phoenix. I'm the legal advisor for Exceed the Bar. We are a company who specialize in legal advisory or providing legal advisory and business psychology services. Uh, one of the services that we offer is to tutor law students and uh, to guide them through the various LLB modules. Um, we groom people for careers in law uh, and we also offer legal recruitment, uh, law recruitment to place candidate legal practitioners, uh, that is, uh, you know, pupils, candidate attorneys, um, in suitable positions. Our content is supplementary and complementary to all university uh, LLB degree modules. The preamble to the Constitution of South Africa lays out uh, several of our country's visions, but amongst these uh, visions is the imperative to free the potential of each and every person in this country. Uh, we recognize the potential of every person and we want every law student in particular to do well in their careers. Uh, to this end, we will seek to sharpen your legal prowess, your knowledge, your skills, and to guide you through your studies to a full uh, in-depth understanding of law. We will also help iron out any problematic subject areas that you may encounter. Uh, our offering includes practical visual skills and things that you may not be taught at law school or university. Our materials are loaded with tips and efficient ways of processing things in law. As part of our post-study services, we endeavor to offer law firms and their principals with best matched uh, students readily chiseled for their articles or pupillage and to place students on a solid footing to a career in law. You can browse our website at www.exceedthebar.com. Uh, our contact details are included at the end of this particular workshop. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the sixth uh, lecture or video. Uh, this one is on how to make notes. The following two or three videos specifically deal with different sections of making notes, tabulated notes and mind maps especially. This one is particularly about how to make notes. So how do you make notes? We're going to explore each. So you have written mediums, you have non-written mediums. What do we mean by that? Uh, in terms of written mediums, that means we're going to be making written notes, or you can draw mind maps, or you can make tables, uh, spreadsheets, another form of tables, or you have your non-written mediums like group discussions and videos. Under your written mediums, the note making medium you choose is a matter of personal preference. Um, this is because we all conceptualize information differently. Some of us think in words, pictures, others think comparatively, others think categorically, others blend all of these uh, styles together. So you need to find what works best for you. Uh, and yeah, uh, with non written mediums, um, it's often best to join a study group and share your understanding of the subject with others. That way you can find if you're on track or off your rails. Um, my only caution there is when it comes to doing assignments and exams, especially if you're doing uh, remote exams or online exams, don't uh, communicate with your fellow students on WhatsApp or Zoom or wherever you're communicating with them on for a group discussion because you'll be penalized, you'll be caught. There are spiders in the networks of um, the online exams and they will are very capable and able of determining if you're doing so or not. The purpose of making uh, notes, written notes, and we're going to compare the purpose of engaging with other mediums. So to make written notes, we do so to extract important information to conceptualize information, to make sense of concepts and to take ownership of the knowledge. You've got to own what you, what you know, you know, 
Walk the walk and talk the talk. There's no other way that of doing that if you don't know what you know. Right? So you've got to make that knowledge yours. And then um, other mediums are there to make study fun. Not make fun of study, but to make study fun. And also to gauge if you're on track. And it's good to get into the habit of speaking law to law students and other people in law because you're speaking the same language remember it's not exactly a layman's language that you're speaking here you're talking with convoluted concepts and um, so you want to know that uh, well you want to give yourself the practice of being able to speak fluently in law so let's get right into it how to make text notes in specific Here's some tips. The future society is completely digital and paperless, so get into the habit to compile your own notes digitally. Um, I use as an abbreviation scheme for little quirks and things that we say in law, so like in terms of, on grounds of, with effect from, with regard to, in order to, transfer, etc. I just give it a little abbreviation like that. Whatever works for you, you don't have to use my abbreviations, but uh, this is, I feel, very practical. And of course, we did this in our first uh, video. So there's, you know, abbreviations for the different courts. There are many more courts than these guys. Just remember that. So whatever court, like for example, even the CCMA is a kind of a court. If you think about it, it's a tribunal or a commission of inquiry and um, an arbitration forum, etc. So they, they each have their own unique uh, abbreviators. Use what works. This we've already been through again in, in one of the previous slides um, or videos rather. This categorization scheme was previously explained as assisting you to make margin notes. So in your study material when it comes to making notes you need to make notes that fall into one of these categories. The entire span of academic literature is conceptual so you must unpack it and repack it into these juridical categories to enhance your understanding and mastery of the subject. Remember, as I said it before, uh, study is the administration of knowledge. And here, by doing this, you're administrating your knowledge, if there's such a word. Um, you also need to add the following to this categorization scheme. Consequences, terminations. Uh, presumptions, duties, responsibilities, rights and powers. So develop your own abbreviation for that. It's going to make life a lot more simple. Your study notes should contain these categories. Um, coming to the practical application, writing your own notes means they must make sense to you. Forget about your notes making sense to others. They're not going to write your exam or do your revision for you. Only you can do that yourself. So you need to get into the habit of making it your own. Remember what I said earlier? You've got to make the knowledge your own. You've got to own it. Right, here I've given um, my study notes or a copy from my study notes from, uh, I think this was contract law, which dealt with the, the issues of or, um, principles of duress and undue influence. So you will see there at the top, top, I've got a stripe for each page and I've put the SU study unit 13, study unit 14 and the title of it. You need to divide your study notes in the same way as your study guide. Obviously you need to be able to cross reference and get to things easily and quickly. Um, so these were for study units 13 and 14 of contract law. Note the ease with which definitions, rules, practice notes and tests are seen. Just by the color scheme. Green, what was that? Definitions. Yellow, rules with red uh, font. Um, orange, tests. Pink there, well I put pink there or purple for case law, citing different cases. Uh, so at a flash you can quickly see what where the relevant things are. So look at the bold headings that label the category of legal knowledge that's summarized, especially remedies, requirements, tests, principles. Guys, they ask you this like it goes out of fashion. You need to know this stuff. 
The trick is to condense what you learn into bite-sized information. So don't go into lengthy explanations. Leave that for the professor. They already did that. You've already read their textbooks and study guides. There you'll see um, I've put an arrow to practice note. Uh, courts require that there must be an unequivocal protest of the time at the time pro, uh, blah, 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 excuse me at the time of payment or entry into contract to prove the involuntary nature of the transaction. Um, that is a note on the side that gets practiced in law, uh, in particular in terms of contract law. So just short and sweet that you can refer to it and say, oh yes, that's uh, what we can expect uh, will be happening in the process of unfolding somebody's case. Make your own uh, examples that illustrate a concept in action. So you can never forget, forget a concept that conjures an image. So over there you will see there we're talking about duress of goods. It means threat to property. There's economic duress. Duress is coercion of the will. Uh, the Latin for it, vis compulsiva. So I gave an example there. I will burn your house down if you don't sign. That's a form of duress. Um, so make your own examples, as many examples as you can, uh, especially when you're confronted with problematic studying material, that is material that you're finding hard to uh, ingest. Note also where case law is mentioned, only a few words sum the essence of the case as authority. Remember, you're going to have your own case summary, um, but here you're just going to put the gist of it. So like there we've got uh, Prela v. Jordan. Uh, it confirmed and laid out the same grounds for restitution and integrum. Um, a contract may be set aside on grounds of undue influence, in that case there of Muberger. So that gives you a, a real short, sharp summary of what you're doing. You don't have to go into all the facts and all the details and what the court held and what. Just put the sum, the essence of the case there. Some notes about notes. Your notes are what you will revise from for the exam. So you need to make them count. So spend a little bit of time on it. Um, this year is from the subject or some of my notes from the subject on, on estoppel and, and, and unjustified enrichment. Um, your notes must be brief and to the point. You want to condense everything you read. So you've got the study guide, the textbook, the tutorial, letter, the journal articles, news, video, webinar, podcast, statute, case law and website into a few pages. You don't have time to go revise everything and therefore it's vital that you make the notes. It's like with your client in future. You don't have time to sit and consult with him and get all the facts from him every time you, you see him. You need to have that recorded on file uh, in a, a form that is sensible to you that you become immediately informed of the facts and the gist of the case. A rule of thumb is that for every 100 pages, you can have 10 pages max in note format. If you've got more than that, you're waffling, you're complicating things. You must just go restudy it then. When writing notes, think of how you would explain the concept to a lay client. They are not going to understand a whole bunch of Latin and complicated reasoning, and I can't emphasize this enough. You know, it's one of the things that... Uh, how can I say, blocks access to justice. And that is a gross problem in the uh, juridical uh, legal community uh, that's been there for many times. You cannot um, overcomplicate things for clients. Uh, point form or bulleted notes help focus attention on the key points in each section that you study. It helps eliminate the waffle in your material. Some subjects like delict and damages are so detailed that you get lost if you have not mastered the art of extrapolating relevant info by them. So you can see there I've put bulleted points. Um, some examiners, they don't mind if you write bulleted points. Uh, it shows a certain uh, rigidity of thinking and systemized way of thinking, but others don't like it. But for the sake of logic, 
and uh, bite-sized information for your studies, I would recommend doing the bullet point format. So get into this habit of making notes early in your studies. Again, thank you for watching. Please do share this video, uh, even the PDF that goes with it, far and wide as possible. Everybody can benefit when they know how to study law. And it's not just necessarily for students. It can be for postgraduates. It can be for already practicing professionals. They may find more efficient ways of studying uh, future things and staying abreast of whatever in the world in, of uh, law. Uh, so there are our subjects. These are what we are presenting. Feel free to go to our uh, e-commerce platform on www.exceedthebar.com and uh, sign up for your courses here. Uh, in the meantime, our free booster courses, this one's listed there in red, uh, do these. I guarantee you, you can only benefit from them uh, both now and in your future career. Thank you for watching and please uh, click on the next video that we can go through things like mind maps and tabulations.